Hi Bagaholics! Welcome back to my channel! I'm Anastasia. I don't have my 50 shades of grey, but I do have my 50 shades of bags. I'm a bagaholic. I'm a luxury bag lover, collector, addict, consigner, um, authenticator, and I do so many things about bags. Bags are my life. You can check out the link below if you're interested. And let's start! In this video, we're gonna discuss how to save for the bag of your dreams and where to get it. Well, firstly, we'll discuss what's exactly standing between you and the bag of your dreams. In the second part of the video, we'll discuss your buying options, advantages and disadvantages for each of them. And in the third part of the video, we'll continue to exact advice on how to save for the bag you really want. That may be your first luxury bag or second or Number 67. I just have one more question. Okay. How does an unemployed girl with three roommates afford the patchwork denim bully Louis Vuitton bag? We'll get to that. And borrowing is not the only option. You know, 10 years ago, I was a young girl, crazy in love with all these luxury bags and luxury pieces. However, I haven't been to Louis Vuitton or Chanel or any other store yet. And at that point, I felt like it's, it was ridiculous for me to even think about it. I mean, the thought about going into, straight into the store and buying me something gave me nothing but fear and tremble and the feeling that I don't belong here. Think about it. I wasn't even aware of the prices, but I thought that the, the dream of buying a luxury handbag will never come true. And that made me realize that money is not the biggest problem. Our feelings are. Well, we all have different income, it's true, but however, what's stopping you from buying, from being able to afford yourself your first luxury piece is not the, exactly the money. It's the fear of judgment. Fear of in-store experience. I don't think we have anything for you. You're obviously in the wrong place. Please leave. Fear that your loved ones won't support you. Bex! Oh! Oh! $200 on Mark Jacobs' underwear. And fear of too much attention. Oh my God. Or just a line from a random person that you're afraid to remember. These luxury pieces are for the rich people. Are you rich? Do you have money to burn? Live your life rationally, spend money wisely, and you'll be good. And no matter who told you that line, be it your parents, your friend, or just a random person, it's you who decides whether it's true or not. Several years back, I had a friend, she was very into Chanel, and she was dreaming about her next Chanel handbag. She didn't have a lot of Chanel handbags maybe three or four, and she was dreaming about her fifth one, let's say, and she said this. If I ever get the Chanel, I'll be lucky. I'll be the luckiest girl alive. But I know I won't be able to afford a Birkin ever. And I realized at that point that it was so painful for me to hear. And then going back and forth, just uh, remembering those words, I realized that for me, Birkin was definitely on the bucket list and I said to myself, someday I'll be able to afford a Birkin. Oh, I'm going for it because it's important for me. Um, and it doesn't matter whether I keep it to myself or I sell it at some point, I will be the girl who bought herself a Birkin, who owned a Birkin and I just sold it because I don't need it or I, don't, I, don't, I just don't like the bag. But it's very important for me to be the owner and owner of a Birkin someday. I committed to it and I bought my first Birkin. It was pre-loved, it was in very good condition, my hands were shaking. I've never, ever spent that much money on a handbag. 
on a car, maybe, but not on a handbag. Well, yeah, it was very, it was really scary. I, well, whenever you are dreaming about this very moment that you get the bag, uh, the bag of your dreams into your hands, you feel like it will be amazing. You will feel like the queen of the world. But actually, that was really scary. Um, however, it was wonderful. And I'm really glad I did that. And now I can say I sold that Birkin, but I had a Birkin at some point. The point is, a luxury handbag may not be the best investment and not the wisest money decision that you can make, but if that's what makes you fulfilled and happy, then go for it. Well, life is short and you do want to ensure that you are making wise money decisions, but you also want to have what's important for you. Now that you're a little inspired, hopefully, let's determine the amount of money that you need. And the first question you might want to ask yourself at this point is buying pre-loved an option. Because as you might know, uh, whenever you are buying a pre-loved handbag, you can save from like 10% to 70% of its store price, depending on the style, depending on the brand, depending on the handbag. If you want to enjoy the in-store experience, I totally get it. However, if you're after an iconic bag like a Louis Vuitton Speedy or Louis Vuitton Neverfull, then you might save up to 70% of the bag's price, which would be around $600, $500. Well, it's a hell of a lot of money, which you can use towards mortgage, towards savings, towards... Who am I kidding? Can I buy one more handbag? Yeah, you can. Now, if you decided to buy pre-loved, watch this video. It will tell you on how to buy a pre-loved bag safely and stay away from scammers while buying the bag of your dreams. Now let's go straight to the savings part. How can you save $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, even, even if the thought of spending that much on a handbag currently makes your hands shake. No, ma'am, I'm afraid that's not allowed. Help me, I'm poor. No. I'll give you a few ideas, but I truly believe that you know them yourself and that the money is not the biggest problem, as we already discussed. Now, if you're on a tight budget, you may consider several or all of these tips. First, let a factor. There is a book called Let a Factor and I want you to read it because it's actually important not only when it comes to saving for a handbag, but when it comes to managing your personal finances. And the overall idea is that if you save just one dollar of your morning coffee for each day of the year, in the end of the year you will have $365. By putting away a small amount of money every day, you can go big in the end of the year. You don't actually need to throw away your latte, especially if that's the best part of your day. Actually, that's kind of sad. You just need to figure out something small you're paying for, you're, but you're not enjoying it. And in our modern world, that might very often be a subscription. Not a Netflix subscription, of course, but uh, I mean, when I realized I'm subscribed to more than 10 services, and 10 websites charge me every month. Regarding two of them, I wasn't really aware what's the service because I didn't, I, I didn't recognize the names on my bill. I mean, that's something that you can easily do. Two, find a freelance job. Well, I know that for some people it's easier than for the others, like graphic designers, translators, journalists, they all can, copywriters, they can easily, well, quite easily find um, some kind of uh, additional income on freelance websites. However, I'm very sure that you possess a unique number of skills. And these are the skills that people are paying for. I mean, if you want to save $2,000 in the end of the year, it's only $5 a day. And well, there is something you can do for $5 a day. Like for example, if you're watching this video, at least you know English and you probably are a native speaker and probably wondering why am I making so many mistakes? Because I'm not a native speaker. So you can definitely be a translator or a tutor or do something that you really enjoy and be paid a little that will bring up a lot in the end of the year. Yeah, but you know, I kind of don't have time for that. I'm already busy with all my life. 
Okay, seriously, are you even committed to buying the bag of your dream? Because I believe someone's making excuses. 3. Sell something you don't need, starting from your clothes. Wait, but I'm... And don't tell me you wear everything you have in your closet. Girl, I know that's not true. Even if you make 30, 40, 50 dollars, you can put that towards the bag of your dreams, right? And of course, there are more opportunities to make more money, like asking for a promotion or changing jobs. And you are perfectly aware that there are many of them and you can use any of them to get what you want if that's what's really important to you. However, the first step here is being able to afford yourself a luxury piece because I believe if you have that feeling inside that somehow rejects the idea of luxury but you, you want it but at the same time something deep inside of you is telling you that no, 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 that's not for me, I will never own such a glorious and expensive bag, then I believe you were born in a, for, in a poor family like me and uh, I believe that you worked your ass off to change that and you worked very hard and what I want you to hear is that you are worthy of anything in this world and this world has a lot of resources, a lot of ways for you to get what you want and someday you will get it and I hope that eventually it will be faster. That was it. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I want you to share your opinion on um, whether you are thinking about buying your first luxury piece. If you had that fear of buying luxury pieces, I want you to tell me about it and tell everyone else because there, are, there will be a lot of people watching this video and they may be inspired by your story and your words. Thank you so much for watching and if you want to support the channel, the best way is to subscribe and to like the video for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you and bye!